The war in Ukraine is starting its second year, and the people who live there are caught in the middle of a bloody battle, including the country's farmers. Farm Journal President Charlene Fink recently sat down with global philanthropist and Illinois farmer Howard G. Buffett, who has traveled to the country five times this past year, where he's witnessed the ravages of war and its impact on its people. The world watched as millions of Ukrainians fled a Russian invasion. One of the largest population shifts since the Second World War. Some 8 million Ukrainians now living as refugees in Europe. Another 6 million displaced within their own country. You just look at this girl, she's just intent on, you know, where she's going, where she's got to get. It's a reality Buffett has witnessed firsthand. I just sat there and watched him and photographed him and, and thought, how many families is this tearing apart? Those that stayed face an uncertain future. This village has really captured my kind of attention from the standpoint that the entire village is destroyed. And they said there are 12 people living in the village now. In what was formerly a town of 1,200. With infrastructure destroyed, Buffett's foundation is on the ground, helping to feed the one in three families now facing food insecurity. The World Food Program says 18 million people in Ukraine are in need of humanitarian help. You can't see the group, but this is made up of about probably 90% of people that are 65 or older. I mean, the elderly people just didn't leave their homes. Farmers are among those hardest hit. So one of the things is a lot of farmers are fighting on the front line and dying on the front line. So that has a huge impact on how you continue to function in your agricultural sector. For residents still willing and able to farm, rockets, munitions, and landmines are a constant concern. The one thing that has happened that's gonna have a really long-term impact on production in Ukraine is the amount of landmines that have been placed all across the eastern part of the country and some of the southern part of the country. There's tens of thousands, really probably hundreds of thousands of of, of acres of farmland that can't be farmed maybe for years. Buffett's foundation is helping by providing detection equipment and expertise, and then there's the equipment for the unknown. This is in the morgue, and this shows them taking uh, multiple DNA samples. That body is so degraded, deteriorated, that they're taking the DNA from the bones. War crimes investigators are working around the clock to uncover test and record evidence from mass grave sites like this one. And this is a mass grave site of 451 bodies. In that graveyard, uh, some of the guys said that there was, you know, 70, 80 percent of the people showed some kinds of torture. Bodies with hands bound, with broken bones and signs of horror. We are not doing a good job of learning from history. And, you know, the Holocaust was never again. Um, Rwanda was never again. And we are watching never again unfold in front of us. Many of those that stayed paid their passage in blood. I talked to a 20 year old woman who described to me how she watched her mother shot in the head in front of her, five feet in front of her. While this nation fights for its future. Hundreds of thousands of kids that are refugees. You have hundreds of thousands of kids that can't go to school. You've had thousands of kids that have lost their parents. It's hard to anticipate what that means. It's really hard to anticipate that. We haven't seen this happen since World War II. A future that will remain forever changed. I think if you really look at what's happening and you look at what the implications are and what the consequences have already been, it's very hard not to say that every country that benefits from freedom and democracy has to stand up. And they need to do it now. We're watching Never Again unfold right in front of us with tens of thousands of people dying and consequences that are really significant to us depending on the outcome.